A volcano nearly a mile beneath the Pacific is lifting the seafloor by 10 feet, unleashing thousands of quakes every day. Right now, it's showing the exact eruption signs that triggered disaster in 2015 and 2011. This isn't just any volcano, it's Axial Seamount, America's most active and restless giant. The title, One Mile Deep, America's Most Active Volcano is About to Blow, is no exaggeration, and the entire Pacific Northwest could feel the consequences if it erupts. The warning lights are flashing. What will erupt first, magma or the secrets hidden beneath the waves? Axial Seamount is not waiting for anyone. The seafloor above this underwater volcano is rising, steadily, relentlessly, and now faster than at any point since the last eruption. Since 2015, the caldera floor has lifted by nearly 10 feet as magma pushes its way upward, inflating the crust like a thick-skinned balloon. Each year, the summit edges higher by about 25 centimeters. But in 2025, scientists have measured sudden bursts, short-lived surges that outpace anything seen in the last decade. This is not a slow, steady tide. It's a series of pulses, each one a warning that the volcano's deep plumbing is under strain. Pressure is building beneath the crust, and the volcano's own body language is impossible to ignore. The ground itself is flexing, not just at the summit, but along old rift zones that stretch for miles in either direction. These are the scars of past eruptions, and now they're showing signs of movement again. The uplift isn't uniform. In some places, the seafloor has buckled more than three meters, while in others, it's shifted only a fraction of that. Sensors anchored to the rock record every millimeter, every tilt, every quiver. Scientists monitoring these signals in real time know what comes next if the pressure keeps rising. The crust will eventually give way. Earthquake swarms have become a daily occurrence. In June, more than 2,000 tremors rattled the volcano in a single day, an unmistakable sign that magma is on the move. Even when the quakes subside, the seafloor keeps climbing, driven by molten rock accumulating in chambers just below the surface. The entire system is primed, and the warning signs are not subtle. Each new measurement adds urgency. The volcano is breathing in, but so far, there's been no release. With every passing day, the margin for error narrows. The only reason these signals aren't missed is because Axial is one of the most intensely monitored volcanoes on Earth. Scientists rely on a web of instruments, watching every twitch and surge around the clock. Without them, the next eruption would arrive with no warning at all. Axial Seamount rises from the deep like a fortress hidden in the cold darkness its summit nearly a mile beneath the surface of the Pacific. At this depth, 1,400 meters down, sunlight disappears, pressure crushes anything unprepared, and yet a mountain taller than three Eiffel Towers stands on the sea floor. Its bulk is hard to grasp from the surface. The main edifice stretches more than 1,100 meters high built up layer by layer from countless eruptions over tens of thousands of years. Unlike the classic volcanic cone, Axial Summit is split open, forming a broad rectangular caldera nearly three miles long and two miles wide. This is not a gentle ball, but a vast sunken platform edged by steep walls and scarred by fissures that drop away into the abyss. The caldera itself is a geological oddity. Most volcanoes have round or oval craters, but Axial's is shaped like a giant box, its corners cut sharp by the forces that built and broke it apart. The floor is littered with collapsed pits, deep cracks, and ancient lava flows frozen in place. Along the edges, the ground falls away in sudden steps, some more than 100 meters deep revealing the scars of past eruptions and collapses. Extending from the caldera, two long rift zones run northeast and southwest, each one a fracture stretching nearly 50 kilometers across the sea floor. These rifts are the volcano's escape valves, the places where magma finds its way out when pressure builds too high. Fissures and vents line these corridors, 
some still warm from the last eruption, others silent but ready to awaken. The entire structure sits atop the Juan de Fuca Ridge, where two tectonic plates are pulling apart, and at the same time, it is fed by a deep hotspot rising from the mantle. This rare combination means Axial is constantly supplied with a new magma, never truly dormant. Standing on the summit, if it were possible, would be like standing at the center of a ruined city, walls rising, floors buckled, and chasms opening at your feet. The volcano's true scale is almost impossible to imagine from above. Only when measured in the darkness, meter by meter, does its vastness become real. Every part of Axial, from its rectangular caldera to its sprawling rift zones, tells the story of a volcano that is not just active, but restless, always building, breaking, and rebuilding itself on the floor of the Pacific. A mile beneath the waves, a network of fiber-optic cables stretches across the volcanic slopes of Axial Seamount. These cables are not just lines in the darkness, they are the nervous system of the world's most advanced undersea volcano observatory. Since the 1990s, scientists have been wiring the seafloor, starting with a handful of instruments and expanding into a permanent web that now delivers live data straight to shore. The Ocean Observatory's initiative, known as the OOI, anchors this system. Its regional cabled array brings power and high-speed internet to the deep, connecting more than 150 sensors that record every tremor, pressure change, and chemical surge in real time. This technology is not just about machines, it's about the people who built and maintain it. Bill Chadwick, a volcanologist with Oregon State University and NOAA, has spent decades tracking Axial's every move. Deb Kelly from the University of Washington leads the OOI expeditions that keep the network running and push its capabilities further each year. Rika Anderson, a biologist from Carleton College, mines the data for clues about how life adapts to catastrophe and rebirth on the ocean floor. Each scientist brings a different set of questions, but all rely on the same stream of live signals flowing up from the deep. In the summer of 2024, the team returned to Axiel for a new round of upgrades. Over 12 days aboard the research vessel Atlantis, they used remotely operated vehicles to install six new benchmarks across the caldera and rift zones. These benchmarks are more than markers. They are precision instruments that track the volcano's inflation and tilt to within a few millimeters. Four of the new sites were streaming data within weeks, capturing the subtle shifts that signal magma is on the move. The last two came online after additional calibration, expanding coverage into regions where the ground has buckled and quakes have clustered. The OOI's cabled array lets scientists detect changes that would have been invisible a generation ago. When the volcano breathes in, the pressure sensors catch every rise in the sea floor. Tilt meters register the slow flexing of rock as magma pools below. Seismometers record swarms of microquakes, sometimes more than a thousand in a single day. While temperature and chemistry probes sample the vent fluids for signs of fresh magmatic gas, each instrument is a window into the volcano's hidden processes, and together, they form a continuous record of its restless energy. All of this happens in real time. Data from the seafloor races up the cables to shore labs, where researchers can watch Axial's vital signs on their screens as events unfold. The system is so sensitive that even minor shifts in pressure or temperature are flagged within minutes. For the scientists who monitor these signals, the volcano is never out of sight, no matter how remote or how deep. With every new benchmark and every line of code, Axial Seamount becomes less of a mystery and more of a living, breathing subject. One that can be watched, measured, and just maybe predicted. Beneath Axial Seamount's fractured summit, the real engine of the volcano churns out of sight. A maze of magma reservoirs and conduits, each one shaping the signals that ripple up to the seafloor. 
The main magma reservoir sits directly under the caldera, a lens-shaped body holding a melt fraction that can reach as high as 32%. This is where the most dramatic pressure swings play out during the volcano's inflation and eruption cycles. But Axial's system runs deeper and wider than a single chamber. Satellite reservoirs branch off to the sides, some with melt fractions as low as 10%, others climbing toward 26%. A newly mapped western reservoir, tucked beneath the caldera's edge, adds to the asymmetry. Magma doesn't pool evenly beneath the volcano. It moves through a network of pockets and sills, each one storing, releasing, or redirecting molten rock as the system recharges. Feeding this restless network is a deep, pipe-like conduit, a vertical stack of magma sills that stretches down into the lower crust. Here, the melt fraction drops to between 4 and 11 percent, but this conduit acts as the volcano's main supply line, channeling fresh material up from the mantle. The structure isn't a straight shaft, it's a series of interconnected layers, each one acting as a temporary reservoir. As magma rises, it accumulates in these sills, gradually building pressure in the chambers above. The geometry is anything but simple. Recent seismic imaging has revealed funnel-shaped features at the boundary between the lithosphere and asthenosphere. These funnels, one to the northwest and one to the southeast of the caldera, rotate counterclockwise relative to the main rift zones. The largest spans over 22 kilometers, dipping steeply before flattening out, and appears to guide magma sideways as well as up. Where these funnels intersect the volcano's shallow plumbing, the stacked sills are truncated, forming the boundaries of the deep melt zones. Connecting the uppermost reservoir to the surface is a narrow throat, a low-velocity conduit that runs beneath the eastern caldera wall. This is the main escape path for magma during eruptions, a direct link between the pressurized heart of the volcano and the fissures that split open on the seafloor. The throat's position matches the most active hydrothermal vents and the highest density of earthquakes, marking it as the volcano's most volatile point. Every eruption in recent decades has started here, triggered when pressure in the main reservoir and the throat conduit reaches a breaking point. The mechanics of this system dictate every warning sign seen at the surface. When magma fills the main reservoir, the seafloor inflates. If pressure builds unevenly, say more in the western satellite reservoir than in the central chamber, the ground above will tilt or buckle in response. Microquakes trace the movement of magma through these hidden corridors, and temperature spikes at the vents reflect fresh injections of molten rock into the shallow system. Each benchmark and sensor on the caldera floor is tuned to these signals, translating the inner workings of the volcano into data points and graphs. The dual supply, one from the spreading ridge, the other from the deep-seated hotspot, feeds this complex architecture, ensuring the volcano is never truly dormant. Instead, it cycles through periods of quiet recharge and sudden release, its hidden plumbing shaping every pulse, quake, and surge that hints at what's coming next. Pressure reaches its breaking point a mile beneath the Pacific, and the seafloor doesn't just crack, it tears open. Fissures race along rift zones, splitting ancient lava fields in seconds. Magma, heated to over 1,200 degrees Celsius, blasts out and meets water cold enough to chill bone. In that instant, seawater doesn't boil. It flashes to superheated fluid, erupting into jets that carry ash, molten rock, and chemical plumes hundreds of meters through the dark. The ocean glows from within as lava pours out, cooling so quickly that it forms new crust in minutes. Pillows and sheets of basalt stack on top of each other, rebuilding the mountain's flanks while collapsed pits and ridges appear where the ground gives way. The eruption wipes the slate clean. Hydrothermal vents, once teeming with tube worms and crabs, vanish under a fresh layer of rock. Entire ecosystems are buried in moments, their lifespans measured in the brief window between eruptions. But the destruction is never total. New cracks open, and within weeks, the first signs of life return. Microbes colonize the hot, mineral-rich vents almost immediately, feeding on chemical energy in the darkness. Soon after, shrimp and crabs arrive, drawn by the warmth and the promise of new food. What was lost is rebuilt, one layer of life at a time, proving that even at the bottom of the sea, renewal follows catastrophe. 
Axial Seamount is more than a curiosity at the bottom of the Pacific. Its restless energy ripples far beyond the volcano itself, reaching into the tectonic engine that powers the Pacific Northwest. The volcano sits directly on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, where the seafloor is spreading and the Juan de Fuca Plate is born. This same plate travels east, sliding beneath North America along the Cascadia subduction zone, a fault system with a history of catastrophic earthquakes and tsunamis. When axial's magma shifts or erupts, it changes the stress along the ridge. Some researchers believe these changes can redistribute forces hundreds of miles away, subtly loading or unloading the Cascadia Fault. The odds of a major Cascadia earthquake in the next 50 years are already estimated at 10 to 15 percent, and every tectonic adjustment offshore is watched closely by geologists on land. While Axial's eruptions pose little direct hazard to coastal communities, its depth and distance buffer most effects, the possibility of stress transfer keeps it on the radar of hazard planners. But the story reaches even further. NASA and astrobiologists study Axial's hydrothermal vents as a window into other worlds. The chemical-rich waters and thriving extremophiles here offer a living model for what might exist beneath the ice shells of Europa or Enceladus. These vents prove that life can arise and endure in total darkness, using chemistry instead of sunlight. Instruments and techniques tested at Axial help scientists design missions to search for life in alien oceans. In this way, every eruption and every new vent at Axial is not just a local event. It's a rehearsal for discoveries that could change our understanding of life in the universe. The pattern at Axial Seamount is not a mystery. In 1998, the volcano inflated, earthquake swarms rattled the summit, and sensors caught the pressure rising, then the crust broke and lava poured out. Thirteen years later, in 2011, the same sequence unfolded. Steady uplift, a cascade of microquakes, and a sudden eruption that left a mile-wide lava flow across the caldera floor. By 2015, the monitoring network was watching in real time as the volcano swelled again. On April 23rd, sensors recorded a burst of more than 8,000 quakes in a single day, followed by a sharp drop in seafloor pressure as the magma chamber emptied. The warning signs were clear, and the eruption played out almost by the book. Now, in 2025, every instrument is flashing red. The volcano has lifted nearly 10 feet since the last eruption, and in June, more than 2,000 earthquakes rattled the caldera in just one day. The pressure sensors show the same relentless climb. The vent chemistry is shifting, hinting at fresh magma rising from below. Each signal matches the pattern seen before every eruption in the past three decades, only this time the signals are stronger, the swarms more intense, and the inflation faster than ever measured. Scientists are watching the countdown unfold, but no one can say if this is just another cycle or the start of something bigger than anything on record. Axial Seamount has lifted nearly 10 feet since its last eruption in 2015, a signal scientists have seen before every eruption since 1998. Today, more than 2,000 microquakes were recorded in a single month, and vent temperatures continue to climb. Real-time data from the OOI cabled network confirm this pattern matches the lead-up to previous eruptions, but no one can say with certainty if the next event will follow the same script. The threat is not just theoretical. Pressure changes at Axial can influence stress along the Cascadia subduction zone, which carries a 10 to 15% chance of a major earthquake in the next 50 years. NASA studies Axial's vents to understand life in extreme environments, both on Earth and beyond. As instruments record every tremor and surge, one fact remains. Axial Seamount is America's most active volcano, and its next move is unfolding in real time, deep beneath the Pacific.